Hello and welcome to Postcard and a Pint. I'm Rachel. And I'm Wills and today we're off to Wrexham. Wrexham? It certainly does. Come on. In today's video, we'll tell you all about Hollywood's rescue of Wrexham Football Club. We'll have a look at one of the seven wonders of Wales and Wills will throw in a few stories as Wrexham is his childhood home. So whack on your 80s playlist, give yourself a squirt of your high karate aftershave and let's go explore Wrexham. Ooh, we might not go for a pint in a Wrexham pub. We don't want to get beaten up. Just joking. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to Wrexham. Wrexham is a large town in northeast of Wales, and even though it's a really old town, it's during the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century when it came into its own. It was really important in the iron, the coal, the leather, the lead, and the lager brewing industries. Let's go take a look. Come on. me is the famous race course ground, home of Wrexham Football Club. Did you know Wrexham Football Club is one of the oldest professional football clubs in the world? In 2020, Hollywood actors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, yup, Deadpool and Ronald McDonald, bought a football club, as you do. Although some saw it as a publicity stunt at first, they have proved to be genuinely serious about the club. They have poured tons of money both into the club and local causes and charities. They even donated £10,000 to Wills' mum's charity, North World Super Kids, last year. Thanks, Rob and Ryan. Much appreciated. There is currently a documentary all about the lads being filmed for the Disney Plus channel. We can't wait to see it. When I was in high school, I was a big Wrexham football fan and I used to come to nearly all the home games for many years. Now, I was here that night, 2-1. Wrexham beat Arsenal. Arsenal finished top of the first division, as it was then. Wrexham were bottom of the fourth division I think it was as it was then FA Cup third round I think it was the third round anyway 82nd minute and Arsenal are beating Wrexham 1-0 eight minutes to go that's it put that out there Mickey Thomas free kick back of the net two minutes later Steve Watkin straight past David Seaman childish get in there come on here's hoping this is the start of their climb to the Premier League Wrexham has two train stations. This one, Wrexham General, and Wrexham Central, which is more in the town centre. Should you feel the need to visit? Majestic Wines, one of the only places locally that sells our favourite Sardinian wine. After all that footballing excitement, it was time to head off down the high street and continue Wills' journey down memory lane. Let's take a look at St Mary's Church. I haven't been inside this church for probably about 35 years to go have a look. There are those who hang on to Christmas even more than Wills. I mean, let it go. I mean, seriously, let it go. It'll happen next year. Get over it. It was so good to see inside the church again after so long. I have memories of being dragged there as a child on a Sunday and spent most of the time counting the square panels on the ceiling. Instead of counting your blessings, Wills, bored were we? This is the start of Wrexham Town Centre. I'm afraid to say, like quite a few town centres in the UK, this one has seen better days. There's lots of empty units now. Everyone shops online since the pandemic. Um, the shops that are here are sort of tanning salons, nail bars, vape shops, etc. Um, and I would just like to say, Wills, I'm still not feeling that great. 22 days since I had a day off. Today is the day. It's my day off. Where does he bring me? Wrexham. Oh, cheers, lad. He's a keeper. Yep, there are definitely prettier towns. Now we mentioned in our last video about my favourite record shop in Phase One Records. That used to be just behind me over there. Now, a kebab shop. This was the first McDonald's in our area and where kids of the 80s would have their birthday parties after a swim at Plasmaduck. I mean, it's my first day off in ages and he takes me for a Mackey's in Wrexham. He's a keeper. Behind me is where Woolworths used to be. That's where I used to come on a Saturday morning, having saved a couple of weeks' worth of pocket money, and used to buy a seven-inch single. Oh, those were the days. It's also where lots of school kids used to nick the pick and mix. 
Not me. I was a good boy. Really? This thatched roof building is the Horse and Jockey Pub, one of the oldest surviving buildings in Wrexham. Dating back from the 16th century, it is named after the finest jockey of the time, Fred Archer. The pub is said to be haunted by his ghost. And that's him on the sign. Where Dragon Travellers behind me used to be our price record, and that was a good record shop as well. I remember going to a record signing with the choir boys for their first album 30 years ago. <laughs> Blimey. I thought you said you were 37. Yeah, right. This old half-timbered building is one of the prettiest in Wrexham. Built in 1904, it used to be the old Talbot Hotel. This building is the old Wrexham Library. Although not the first or the last library in Wrexham, it's definitely the prettiest. It was built and furnished in 1907 with a grant of £4,300 from the steel magnate Andrew Carnegie. Nisaf is a green space in the centre of Wrexham. It has the Guildhall on one side and the current Library and Arts Centre on the other. And on the two days a year when it's not raining in Wrexham, I believe it's a popular student hangout. When I was about 10, I used to come here every Saturday morning. I used to go to the Children's Theatre Workshop. I haven't been in here for 35 years, so I'd love to go inside, but it's closed. If this is when he was first told he was funny or his jokes were good, I'm not surprised it's closed. The Memorial Hall behind me is, is basically it's just a hireable hall these days but it's where I used to go to computer club now back in the day when I was young everyone had the ZX Spectrums and their Commodore 64s and we used to come here on a Thursday night and everyone would be copying the games with their tape to tape machines and that was good fun but my other memory of this place is when I was in my first band we were pretty damn bad to be honest but we played our first gig here we were crap I believe they emptied the room in minutes a bit like your jokes Wills This incredibly strange building behind me is what we called Wrexham Baths growing up. I believe it's called Waterworld these days, and only a few dared to go off the top diving board. Ooh. I did. Before this 1970s spaceship landed in Wrexham, there was in fact another swimming baths. The Tuttle Street Baths opened in 1901 and were considered state of the art. So much so that they remained open until 1970s, when the USS Enterprise landed. One of the things I remember most about Wrexham coming as a kid was the smell of the hops. That's because they used to make Wrexham lager here. And this was the original Wrexham lager building, the office buildings. Whereas where B&M are now, in all these shops, that's where the, the beer making plant was. And did you know that they even served Wrexham lager on the Titanic? I didn't. There you go. This is the other train station in Wrexham, Wrexham Central. It was opened in 1866, but did you know, it used to be 370 metres over there. But they had to move it when they built Island Green Shopping Centre in 1998. This is the Wrexham Central Arcade. Its purpose was to link Hope Street to the Butcher's Market. Planning started in 1890 and it opened in 1891. You could now access the butcher's market more easily. Moo. This lovely little alleyway is another route through to the markets. Just on the left in this alley used to be a news agents back in the 80s. They used to sell, shall we say, a lot of top shelf magazines. And I remember being a huge Samantha Fox fan when I was younger. For those who don't know, she was a page three glamour model and a pop star. Now I remember going in this shop with my mates trying to buy a Samantha Fox magazine only to be kicked out. Well, I was only about 10 at the time. And here is the very same butcher's market we were just talking about. It was the first of three indoor markets in Wrexham and dates from 1848. Not too much meat today, it's more your pick and mix. And this is the general market. It sells general stuff. As it's the Six Nations rugby at the moment, get your dragons here. The extensive sellers under this market were used as air raid shelters in the war. Some believe there is an underground tunnel from the sellers beneath this market that leads to St Giles's Church. Very famous five. 
Now this used to be the site of the old Hippodrome Cinema, a theatre at one point, and I used to come here on a Saturday morning, and my mum used to drop me off when she used to do her shopping, and I used to come and watch a load of kids films and cartoons. It's also where I watched E.T. eight times, well, between here and the Vogue Cinema, which I think we've seen, or if we haven't, we'll see in a minute. He brings me to a burnt out wasteland in Wrexham. He's a keeper. This is the Wednesday Arms Hotel, built in the mid 18th century. The original frontage still survives, thank God. Don't look at this bad boy from the rear, it ain't pretty. Anyway, that fabulous cast iron balcony has seen two British Prime Ministers deliver speeches from it. One was William Gladstone and the other was David Lloyd George. Lloyd George announced from here in 1918 that the First World War was over. This is the iconic St Giles Parish Church. The main body of the church dates from the late 15th century and the tower from the 16th century. It's one of the seven wonders of Wales, don't you know? We mentioned Tuttle Street earlier when talking about the original swimming baths. Here we find the Nags Head. This is where, back in the 1830s, the Border Breweries had its roots. It was then taken over by Arthur Soames and this is the Soames Brewery Chimney, an iconic landmark in Wrexham. In 1931, it became Borders Breweries after merging with the Island Green Brewery and a firm from Oswestry. The site closed in 1984. Earlier, we mentioned the Vogue Cinema and this is where it used to be. Housed originally over a public house, it was quite short-lived. It opened in 1981, but burned down in 1986. To get to the entrance, you had to go down this little secret passage. This is the passage to Eagle's Meadow. Ooh, a Rudy shop. This is now a rapidly declining shopping area. Back in the 70s, it was Asda's car park and the site of a weekly market known as the Beast Market. But it wasn't Wrexham's original Beast Market though, as that was held in St George's Crescent. This is the new location of the Wrexham Lager Brewery. After commercial production stopped in 2000 and total production stopped in 2002, the brewery was demolished. Thankfully, after a long campaign by Martin Jones MP and the Roberts family, they managed to revive the brand. Production of the updated brand started once again. There is an on-site shop and regular beer gatherings. Guess who had to have some? Well, that was Wrexham. Certainly was. Now I know I said in the video, this is quite nice actually. It's <laughs> really nice. <laughs> I know I said in the video, we weren't gonna go to a pub because we might get beaten up. I was just joking. The real reason we didn't go to a pub was why, Will? Because it took us six weeks to make this video. It certainly did. Normally we go out together, we film together, but I had lots of work. At the yeah, I went out doing a bit of filming early January, which is why there's a Christmas tree in it mm -hmm. early on. And then you had a day off and we both went out and we did some talky bits and yeah. you weren't feeling well. We thought you had the COVID. We had to go we had to home. go to bed, which is not like you. No. We went out a third time. We did some more bits and bobs. Then we tried to put some voiceover on it. We put it all together. We watched it back and... and it was very good. It was crap. Yeah. But we're not scared to admit these things. Nope. We work in theatre. We, we assessed it was crap. We, <laughs> we sniffed it up. We, and we hope we've salvaged yeah, it. Yeah, we moved it around. We give it a new vibe. And we hope you've enjoyed yeah. it. So, what did you enjoy today? I enjoyed seeing the today? church again. What did you enjoy in Wrexham? Oh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed seeing the church again. And brought back some good memories. And I enjoyed chatting to the chap in the new Wrexham Lager place. That was good. That was good. Yeah, and I really enjoyed uh, going to see Rex and Lager. I didn't enjoy the McDonald's. <laughs> the McDonald's was a bit... Mm, it was a bit. Yeah, but um, yeah. The idea of a McDonald's is always better than a McDonald's. It certainly is. Yeah. But anyway, on to new news. On to new news. Thank you. Yay, we hit 500 subscribers Way, thank you. last week. We are absolutely over the moon. We are. And I know we've asked you on all our Vegas uh, videos for questions. Tomorrow is the night we are going to film our 500 subscriber video, which will be out next Sunday. It's a question and answers and will be out next Sunday. Yeah, lots answer. of little travel stories, yep. little bits. Yep. And if you're interested, if you're not, skip next week and go on to the week after because we did something fun yesterday. We did something really fun we yesterday. Did, I'm not going to tell you what it is, though. It was a long day. It was a really which long is day. why we look like yeah, this. Yeah, we look like death now because... We went on the plane. Twice. Twice. <laughs> in one day. And that's all we're saying. Don't tell them anymore. Okay. That's all we're saying. So we will say, until next week... Cheers, Cheers to, to the, the good, good times! times. I mentioned earlier that I'd seen E.T. eight times in the cinema, but what is E.T. short for? Dunno. Because he's got little legs. Oh.